Today's spooky spot, we are continuing our looks at the Mighty Max Horror Heads. We're going to be having a look today at Skull Warrior. This was actually the last Mighty Max head that Spot picked up. I only picked up three of these, but uh, I'm loving these so much, I might actually try to find more of these on eBay. This is the Mighty Max in some gruesome robotic, kind of looks like a gremlin, kind of looks like a werewolf, but uh, he also comes with what looks to be a, like a giant eyeball. Looking forward to getting this opened up. On the back, a quick small comic showing you Mighty Max's adventures. At no point anywhere on the comic does it indicate that Mighty Max has a weapon. I don't know how well he would even stand against this robotic thing that's pursuing him, but how would Mighty Max even consider surviving against some the feats so preposterously outweighed as something like this. It just seems impossible. Other horror heads, however, available. Besides the Skull Warrior, there's Lava Beast, Droid Invader, Nightwing, Sea Squirm, Nuke Ranger, Chronosaur, and the Zomboid. Coming to us from the folks over at Ideal. If you were to set our terrific time machine back, you would want to go back to 1992. That's when these horror heads were available. Spot's going to take a break, a blood-curdling break, if you will. And when we come back, we're going to get a better look at the Mighty Max Skull Warrior Horror Head. There's more anyway, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. So, first having a look at the pamphlet that comes with the Skull Warrior. Open this up. It's the same one that we've seen before, showing you all the horror heads. And on the other side, some of the larger sets as well. I'd like to get my hands on these. The good thing about Mighty Max, too, is that they're really cheap. Like, you can find them on eBay now, sealed uh, my, uh, Mighty Max horror heads and larger sets. And they're not overly expensive, which is something I really like. It's allowed me to go back and pick up some of these that I saw when I was younger, just never got a chance to pick them up later on in life. So let's have a look at the Skull Warrior. Now I've done the same thing as I did with the uh, Zomboid. I kind of put everything together. I'm gonna open it up and then I'll show you guys how everything kind of comes together. The hardest part with closing up shop is that his eyeball kind of can be a little bit more of a problem to get everything into place. Whoops, try not to drop it though. The head is kind of cool. Again, kind of looks like a werewolf, kind of looks like something robotic. Kind of looks like something from Lord of the Rings, all kind of mushed together. It's also got a robotic eye, which is a nice touch too. The back is flat, so it lays extremely well. And for comparison on the other two that we've had to look at, there's Zomboid. And if I had larger oven mitt-like hands, there's also the Nightwing. Can you kind of see which one, kind of see which one Spot's favorite is? Yeah, it's Nightwing, hands down. So, to get a Horror Head Skull Warrior opened, again, you're just going to push the tab on the bottom. Hopefully these will stand the test of time, because I feel like this, pushing this in enough, it's going to eventually break, but so far, so good. When you open it, it uh, can be a little difficult getting the eyeball kind of just right especially when you're ready to close things up because you can see the eyeball doesn't really want to stay in a place. So sometimes it's easier to kind of line things up and then kind of close it the opposite way. But you have a eyeball, which ends up being kind of a platform. And this is uh, kind of cool because it's got like some interaction going here. You can pretend like you're spinning the platform. You can take this little ogre kind of overlord kind of guy and he can stand right on top of the platform. And in fact, one better, when you're playing with this, you can also have him kind of flying around on it, which I think kind of the instructions in indicate too, have him just kind of flying around on this hover, kind of hover platform, if you will. Or you can, again, just kind of pretend like you're playing with it through the top section of the head. There's also an area where you can take Mighty Max, and just in case you were wondering, it is, yes, the same Mighty Max that we've seen with all the other build, uh, opening sets. Mighty Max can sit right at the top of the platform. And in the instructions, you kind of have, you can kind of pretend like Mighty Max has been dumped 
into kind of a dungeon cell prison. You see some shackles going on there. Some robot debris going on in there too. So that's kind of cool. I like that. And as with the other sets, there's a section right at the back. We can take Mighty Max's feet and clip those into place. So far, this is the only set of the three we've looked at where Mighty Max technically could attach to two different areas, one on the platform and one on the main base. There's also a section where the little ogre guy, because he's got two peg holes on his feet, there's a couple of little areas where you can peg him into place. I had him at one point pegged in like this. You can also spin him around. And it doesn't, I don't think he sits as well on the other side. But you can kind of have him leaning like this. And you can have Mighty Max down here and he could be like, you know, telling Mighty Max, you'll never escape my dungeon. Ha 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 ha. And Mighty Max can be like back here. That's kind of cool. When you're ready to pack it up though, you can take the ogre. Mighty Max will just stay basically where he is right now. Take the ogre guy and you'll see where everything sits into place. You see he fits his head in between these two areas, his arms above these areas. Yeah, everything just snaps very, very easy into place. And it doesn't go anywhere. You know, there's no worry that this is going to fall out when you're at Nana's house or anything like that. The hardest part, though, is the eye. And what you want to do is you want to kind of just line the eye up like this. Or actually, sometimes, again, it's easier. Line the eye up upside down like that. Because everything is kind of... The hardest part, as you can see right here, is getting it around this little lip. There's a little clip at the top that you have to get this through the hole and then it wants to fight because it's on an angle right now. You have to get it right underneath. Oh, there it is. That's why. There's a little peg hole right there. That's why I was fighting so much with it. You have to, you can't put it on an angle because it won't fit into place. You kind of have to put it in on more of a flatter surface and then clip that into place. Ah, see, now the eye is not going to go anywhere. And then when you're ready, just that closes all up and you can take Skull Warrior to go. Again, he's not one of my favorite horror heads. Again, my favorite probably is the bat because it's also Halloween right now. It just looks cool. It's got the blood all over his teeth. But I think of the two, I kind of like this guy, I think, a little bit more than I like Zomboid. If you guys would definitely like to see Spot review more of these, I can definitely do that because these are fun little play sets. Brings me back to when I was a, a, wee, a wee lad. I didn't have Mighty Max back then, but uh, we can have a look at them certainly now. Today's spookerific review, Spot was having a look, or continuing our looks at the Mighty Max Horror Heads. We're looking today at the Skull Warrior, which doesn't quite look more like a skull. It looks more like a, like a werewolf. Stay tuned, guys. Even though we're finished our looks at the... Mighty Max uh, Horror Heads. Certainly stay tuned, guys. There's going to be more spookerific reviews heading to you this month of October. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.